Well, howdy, friends. Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another episode in our Q&A series. You know, I have to start by saying, pardon our appearance, friends. We're working on our set here. So if you could, please subscribe. Even though it's free, it really helps us out. And it's gonna help. Is that, is that plant smoking? Um, anyways, my imagination running wild there. Um, we're trying to get some props for the set, and if you subscribe, again, even though it's free, it really helps us out. We appreciate it. And of course, hit that like button. It just makes us feel good and wants us to answer more questions. So as always, keep the questions coming. Make sure they come to admin at madriveroutfitters.com, um, <clears throat> and we'll get to them as quickly as we can. Uh, I want to make it real quick here this week. Um, so we can get back to work on the set and make it look all pretty for y'all. Hi, Brian. Uh, well, this is from Bob Wilkin uh, from Loveland, Colorado. Bob says, hi, Brian. Fishing first light in the mountains and cold in slammers. So it must be really cold. Two fingers dead, no feeling, not good. A couple of hours later, sun's up and I can feel the fingers again. Can you recommend a glove that won't get in the way too much just going to get colder. Yes, probably is going to get colder. It's fall of 2019, and I'm listening to the rain fall on the roof here at Mad River Outfitters. And then very uh, similar question, Riker from Mona, Utah. Riker says, hey, Mad River Outfitters, as I get ready for the upcoming winter fishing season, I was wondering if you guys could talk about some gloves that would be good for winter fly fishing. Well guys, Riker and Bob, yes, I can. Um, we have gloves. We have gloves here at Mad River Outfitters. Um, and as you can see, we are big fans around here of most anything Sims. And Sims just does a fantastic job of things to keep you warm, to keep you dry, to keep you cool, to keep you comfortable. And their glove line is no exception. And let's start off at, at the top, okay? And this right here is by far our best-selling pair of gloves. And this is the Guide Windblock Fold-Over Mitts, okay? And these are fingerless gloves that, like Bob said, they don't get in the way too much. Uh, I can tie knots, I can feel my line, et cetera, et cetera. But then the cool feature is that they have this mitten function that will fold over even on the thumb when I need to really warm up. And it, like Bob said, you've got those dead fingers. Well, we don't want them to die completely. Let's get them warm and toasty with these mitts. And then when I want to fish again, I can snap these, snap these in place. They're not going to come flopping around and get in your way. And you can fish, tie knots, do what you need to do. Um, made out of really, really great smooth finish fleece. They've got a warm, fuzzy interior, and they do have the wind block membrane, um, which is really going to keep your hands toasty. And they do still work if you get them wet. They're still going to retain heat when you get them wet. So that is by far our number one selling pair of gloves, and the variations of these over the years always have been. Now they are pricey. They're expensive gloves at $64.95 currently, um, but they are worth it if you really need them. If that's a little too pricey for you, they do make just straight up like Polar Tech 200 or so. Same concept here. You got the fold over mitt, just straight up fleece. It does not have the exterior fabric and interior fabric. It does not have the wind block membrane, and these are not gonna be nearly as good when you get them wet, but they come in at $29.95, so you can get the functionality of the fold-over mitt here and <clears throat> without the price tag. If you don't need or want the fold-over mitt, they make the, uh, excuse me, that's called the Headwaters Fleece Fold-Over Mitt, and this is just the straight-up fingerless mitt. Again, approximately Polar Tech 200 fleece, uh, just a well-made, simple fleece glove, and without the fold over, we're looking at $24.95. So a little bit more affordable for a, a basic pair of fingerless fish, fishing gloves. 
Now I'm a little bit more of uh, myself, a wool guy. I really like um, the wool half finger gloves and this is probably our second best seller is the Sims wool half fingers. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't fish in really cold conditions, uh, but when I go on certain trips and fishing here on the mad during the late fall, early spring, I do carry these in my kit bag. They've got a little gripper palm on here, which helps you hold on to your fly rod. And of course, nothing really beats wool as far as uh, keeping you warm. And when they get wet, they're still gonna retain heat. Another pair of gloves that we sell a lot, if you're really worried about keeping your hands dry, the Kispiox glove from Sims is a waterproof, basically a neoprene, stretchy neoprene. And <clears throat> they actually have the, uh, the little touch pad thing on here so you can use your cell phone if you have to. Um, and amazing, you can really, you can feel your fly line and you can feel stuff. In fact, when these first came in, we walked up to the cash register and I was able to pull out dimes from the cash register while wearing these. So I probably wouldn't fish in them. I know plenty of people that do. Uh, they're not going to be the best at keeping you warm, but they are certainly the best at keeping your hands dry, which in turn can keep you pretty warm. So um, if you're going to be reaching into the water a lot, for sure, the Kispiox glove from Sims is definitely a, um, a good choice and we do sell a ton of them. Um, so there you go. I think that pretty much runs down the entire line of Sims. So there you go. Rundown for Bob and Riker. Uh, we'll get you guys out a hat and a fly box. We appreciate the questions. Thanks for being here. And last but not least today, uh, Nick Spears from Waldron, Arkansas. Nick says, how often should I replace my fly line? I keep hearing different things when watching videos and reading articles. Loving the videos y'all make, they have helped me a ton in getting started in my new obsession. Well, Nick, um, thanks for the question. Uh, thanks for the kind words. We appreciate you watching. And you know, I can't answer that, Nick. There's just absolutely no way. There's way too many variables. Um, for example, I think the first question is, how good of a fly line is it? Uh, if it's a relatively inexpensive line, the core and the coating may not be that great, and it's going to last half as long as some of your more expensive lines. For example, some of the new scientific anglers with the AST Plus coating, they're claiming that are going to last three, four times as long as your average fly line. So that's number one. How good of a fly line is it? And it is true, although I'm not a huge proponent of spending uh, tons and tons of money on a fly line, we have seen that the, the higher quality stuff is going to last you longer. Next question is, how much do you fish? I mean, if you're fishing once a week, twice a week, it's going to last a lot less time than, say, if you're fishing once every three or four months, obviously. Um, and then, of course, how well do you take care of it? Do you clean it and lubricate it if it needs to be lubricated? Uh, we have tons of people that come in all the time and they say, well, I just bought this fly line, you know, two years ago and it's cracked and it's starting to sink. Well, you ask, how often did you clean it and dress it? And they've never heard of such a thing. And, of course, their fly line has gone to crap in a short period of time. If you take care of it, it might last you two to three times as long just based on that. Could also be if you're fishing in a, a very clean cold water stream versus a real scummy pond. You know, there's just a, tons of tons of variables, Nick, when it comes to that. Um, and I just don't think there's any one answer. I can tell you, though, if you're, if you're fishing a floating line and it's starting to sink on you, uh, probably something going wrong there. You need to have a look. And then, of course, if it's starting to crack on you, you can look at it and you can see little cracks in the finish. Uh, that's going to tell you that you probably need to replace the line. And, of course, if it gets nicks or what have you, um, you'll know. You'll know when it happens. Uh, but there's no, I can't say every six months or every two to three years that you need to replace your fly lines. I have some lines that I've had for 
five or six years. They go to the Bahamas with me once or twice a year. And then I have fly lines that last me six to eight months because I'm chucking streamers with them and beating the heck out of them uh, when I'm guiding. So anyhow, there you go, Nick. Sorry, I can't give you a better answer, but the best answer is you'll know when it happens. Uh, and then of course, give me a call when it does. I'll help you get a replacement. So there you go, friends. Thanks as always for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, like this video. It just makes us feel good. And stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you here at Mad River Outfitters. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.